uh, this, the question actually we started at the beginning and I asked you uh, uh, why network vulnerabilities are to be covered by a system admin it is a network issue and uh, the system admin or a system admin has to tackle why because it is a concern of all it is a concern of all actually that uh, um, uh, the security that uh, the security uh, issues the system might face uh, are coming from a network only so a system admin has to tackle all what he is concerned with his system what he is administrating and so on so in this regard in this regard uh, a system admin has to uh, tackle all the network vulnerabilities that they are causing an issue for his system for his environment for his work where he is an administrator otherwise otherwise he will miss remember a security expert has to cover all the security issues an attacker or a hacker has to be successful in doing only one uh, attack technique he has to be successful in one attack technique only thus he will be an attacker a security expert or security let's say uh, responsible he has to be aware of all capable of doing all in this regard uh, great so unless you have any uh, requests or any uh, let's say uh, clarifications requests let's get uh, into our work let's continue from where we stopped last class uh, we uh, were able to define some of the, some of the network types some of the network types uh, uh, networks of, sorry vulnerability types categories We continue from uh, there, from the same uh, level. Uh, so, um, replay attack, actually, replay attack, it's one of the techniques that uh, attackers might do. It is a sort of a man-in-the-middle attack. It is still interference. It is uh, an interference, actually. Uh, two parties are communicating. An attacker comes in between and hacks what has been communicated for a reason. Actually, uh, this is a scenario. We have uh, party number one, let's say computer number one, device number one, agent number one, uh, part number two, or system number two, or computer number two, or A and B. They are exchanging data, send and receiving, send and receiving, both of the devices. An interferer, an interferer comes in between, succeeds in getting injected or infiltrated into the network and sees what is happening there what a is sent to b and what b is sent to a <clears throat> he captures a signal a message sent from a to b for example or a message sent from b to a he captures it capture capture it for a future purpose to use it later to reuse it again so he will capture it, save it with him, and stop it there. He will not send it, he will not forward it. For example, A is sent to B. He will capture what A has sent and will not let it go to B. He will not let it go to B. Thus, he will use it for a future time. This is the type, the category of the replay attack. When he capture it, he will use it for a future time. We stop there at that level only. We stop at that level only. So uh, we are not uh, specifying a specific uh, uh, attack, but we are tackling a type, a category. If the attacker or the interferer or the man in the middle peripheral capture the uh, message or the communicated, uh, let's say, uh, data, packet, frame, whatever, and to use it later on, do not let it go to destination, so this is a sort of a replay attack. One of the very famous, actually, um, vulnerabilities, actually, due to network issues, is the exposure of, uh, uh, of uh, let's say, authentication, let's say, keys, passwords, 
this is exposed and this, uh, let's say, portal or resource, it's an online one, it is um, reported and uh, exposed in public and it is, this is available uh, in an online resource. It is um, recorded in a conference since the 2007, so it is an example only of a network issue result consequence. Consequence. You are using Facebook, and uh, some uh, somehow you are finding your password is available inside uh, for public. Everybody can access your account. This is a disaster. Giving the example on your Facebook. We continue. So uh, another uh, another category, another type of network issues, which is the CSRF, the cross-site request forgery. It is a context of using network resources uh, illegally. Uh, actually, this this specific this specific uh, category of attack actually. Uh, this across the CSRF, it is actually an, uh, a behavior to be done by uh, an attacker remotely, but on a, a on a victim's device. It is not to be done on the network device. It's on a victim's device. The co context of the side jacket, side jacket, um, it is a sort of utilizing users' history when browsing uh, web solutions uh, for different purposes. What does it mean? <clears throat> Commercial applications. They use cookies for facilitating the, um, the the business and the commercial activities, for delivering better advertisements, for making the user experience much more richer. So, when we define what are cookies, chapter number two. Uh, so, attackers might use, let's say, portal cookie, portal number one cookies, for example, Facebook's cookies. To see what the users are facing, actually, what are what are the uh, the visited locations, what are the visited, um, let's say, directories and interfaces, what are the uh, the, um, the requests of, that the user has made, and so on. Side jacket. So, cookies of Facebook has to be used only have to you be used only by Facebook. Cookies from. Uh, MySpace or whatever have to be used by MySpace only. Cookies from eBay has have to be used only by eBay and so on. Yet, if an attacker wishes to use the cookies from a different platform, this is a side jacket. This is the context of side jacket. It is a, uh, it is a sort of a CSRF, cross-site request forgery. Cross-site request forgery means an attacker he has a domain, <clears throat> and the domain uses cookies. He will make his domain use other domains cookies, which is not legal. This is a cross-site request for the cross-site, cross-site. Requests, actually, you are going to forge them, so we are not uh, legally using the, uh, the content. Actually, because Facebook is public, as per an example. But the cookies, they are not public, they are in background, they are so, sort of resources available in background, they are not given to the public use. <coughs> if happens, this is CSRF, and thus, this is a side jacking type of attack. Side jacking type of attack. Any questions here, please, at this level? Any questions here, please? Before we continue, no, Mister. Okay, we continue. 
uh, we were talking okay, we talked about issues we uh, the network issues we talked about types categorization of those issues the network issues what we're going to see now is the methodologies approaches how to implement those network issues not all of them but you see the major network issues the, ma the major recognized network issues Uh, mainly, when we talk about a network issue, we're going to talk about the network service issue. Network issue means does not mean that we are going to see a wiring issue, while it can be a cause for an issue. Yeah, methodology is here to define, but they actually draw on the network issues. They are mainly network services. And uh, since we talk about net, network services, so uh, for sure it is on top of a uh, protocol or a list of protocols. Okay. SNMP is one of the very famous uh, protocols utilized for different um, um, network activities, mainly in the management, in the context of um, smart devices belonging to the layer number three of the OSI model, they are actually equipped with an uh, intelligent uh, potential. This intelligent potential means it's a management capability. When we say the switch, it has a switching capability. It helps, it helps, uh, and users to not and users. It helps a floor actually or floors to be directed to uh, correct destinations. This is due to a management capability, and the SNMP can do that. Uh, means the SNMP as the main uh, activity when you say management, it is to help the flow, for example, be route to the uh, right destination, as for example. It specifies the uh, destination and can read what is the destination and uh, clearly uh, can state what is the destination, if it's uh, correct or not. So on, uh, the management is in this regard. There are versions, there are versions, but still all the uh, versions they are uh, you know, operating up to today because because they are still, there are ameliorations, there are added values in the uh, early ages, uh, sorry, in the uh, old and the new uh, versions, but still the old and the early uh, versions, they are still operating. Means the functionality are still needed. It's an MP. So the management here, the management here of uh, the network of flow is under this uh, service. This is a simple ne network management protocol. So the management here, it would be under this category. So uh, from, from here, from here, we uh, define the DNS, the management. Uh, what we want to talk about here is the domain, uh, let's say, recognition. When we say, for example, we are going to open the University of Nizwa website, we're going to open the University of Nizwa website. Yeah, we're going to open the and let's say Nizwa website. Whatever, any domain, google.com, bababay.com, any domain we're going to open. What is the issue? There is no issue actually. www.fababay.com or unizwa.com. It's something that we humans understand. We can read the textual representation. www.uniswa.com, something like that. Oh, okay, so the computer will open it. And the, it's not uh, 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 as easy as you think because the computer does not understand what is www.uniswa.com, does not understand what is this English text. We don't understand. It's a machine. It's a judgeable box. Remember that. There have to be actually an identification to the domain, which is the Unizo.com, for example. The identification we saw that in lab when we did the reconnaissance and the enumeration tasks or activities at the beginning of the semester. We were able to identify that a domain is linked to an IP address. To open Unizo.com, there is an IP address linked to that. Uh, Domain that is an IP address linked to that domain. <coughs> oh, 
Okay, Uniswap.com have or has an IP address. Great. The computer understands the IP address or recognizes the IP address or the uh, www.uniswap.com. Actually, that have to be the computer recognizes only the context of binary values, only binary values. He recognizes the IP address in a bin binary format. And to make the computer understand when the user types www.uniswap.com, he, he understands that this IP is mapped by this domain. That has to be a role to correlate the domain to the IP and the vice versa, the IP to the domain. This is the role of the DNS. This is the role of the DNS, the uh, domain name system or domain name server. This DNS protocol, it uh, manages the correlation, the link in between uh, the visual domain, the www, and the IP address that the server, the computer, or the host recognizes. So, the user asks for the universe.com. The server recognizes that the user is asking for this IP address. So, he will deliver you the content of this uh, domain here, of this IP address. This is due to the correlation of this DNS. Any questions here, please? Great, you continue. Uh, okay, some of the uh, references for this uh, for this uh, view. Okay, uh, <clears throat> what is the context? <clears throat> what is the issue? Or what are the issues when we say that DNS is the correlation between the IP and the uh, the domain, the IP number and the www name website or web application name what is the problem the problem is there are is that there are attacks that might falsify this correlation what does it mean it means if i open www.unisw.com the website will open me for example www.sultanqaboos.com university something different this behavior is a falsified behavior and this is due to one of the attack techniques this is one of the methodologies followed to falsify the serves here we are talking about dns poisoning we are talking about dns poisoning the website the actually the the user has asked a specific domain as for example here my space the server at the end the server at the end he delivered he delivered a different a different domain at a different ip address why because there is <clears throat> because there is this is actually the whatever for example this is the uh, the uh, my space host 216 78 38 130 my space this is the correct ip address the attacker will change the IP address of this domain and put instead this IP address. <coughs> it's a very simple uh, step. And this point, this behavior, it's a network issue, but it will be done on a computer, on a host device, on the user's device. This user, if he opens my space, this user only, this user only, if he opens my space, he will be getting this IP address, which is completely different. It's the favabay.com. He will not get the uh, MySpace. He will get the favabay.com, 69.32.142.109. 109. So, falsifying the correct IP address with an erroneous IP address, it's a DNS poison. DNS poison. You are injecting a poison to falsify the correlation between the IP and the, <coughs> the domain name. It happens in a local file and the local computer of the host. The host's computer will be utilized to 
do the DNS poisoning. It's a network issue. You open www.unisro.com or myspace.com. So you are asking something to be run in the network level. But the issue has been done in your system only. So here we see one example of the considerations that a system admin has to recognize. The system admin, not the network admin. The system admin has to know this issue. He has to fix. He has to control. He has to prevent. How it happens? <coughs> In every uh, Windows file, actually, and, and the operating system level, and there is a, there is a path for that. There is a local file. There is a local file. It's a textual file. It do not have any extension. It do not have any extension. It's a textual file like we, you see here. <clears throat> this textual file. It has a correlation in between the domains and the IP addresses. Domains and IP addresses, and so on. So in the sense of, if an attacker will falsify the IP address that points to a domain, he would type them here. He will type, for example, here, unisbo.com, and he types the IP address of the Sultan Qaboos University Com. The IP is from something different, and the domain is from something something different. This is DNS poison, and he saves the file. That's it. DNS poison. Cache poison. DNS cache poison. It's not the DNS poison now. This is another methodology that attackers can do to quantify the network behavior. DNS cache poisoning, <coughs> uh, it's another technique that uh, tackles the DNS protocol only, the DNS serves only, uh, via which we see a legitimate user requested a service, which is actually a domain, www.unizu.com, www, whatever, google.com, or something like that. He's asking for some resource, domain, the provider, we see that the uh, request is linked to a specific IP address, and he will deliver the content of that IP address, saying that it is the content of this uh, domain. This is the normal behavior. The cache poisoning is a technique via which an attacker will recognize clearly that the user will use this service we will control the use of this service. We will control the use of this service. And any request coming from this client to this request, to this uh, service, he will try to be very fast and faster than the server. And then sends so many replies to the customer falsified content, with the falsified content. The same domain, but with different IP address. So many, they are the same, so many. And he tries to be very fast. The first, the first that reaches the client, the client will admit that. Means, if any of those replies that comes from the attacker reaches before the reply coming from the server, before this reply, so the, 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 uh, the computer will consider that reply, will reject the legitimate reply. So this is a cash poison. So the attacker is controlling the cash of the server. He's controlling the cash of the server. Any re any request to a specific domain, he will reply with a falsified DNS content. Means falsified matching domain IP. He will try to be very fast. And the first one <coughs> received the first reply received by the attacker by, sorry by by the uh, the client the client will admit that and he will reject all the others including the legitimate he will not say no no this is uh, correct no he, he does not know 
the, 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 the client. Whatever he requests first, he, first he will admit. DNS cache poisoning. DNS cache poisoning. A scenario via which actually uh, we see the uh, work of the DNS. A client requests uh, a domain because because what we saw here is a direct link in between the client and the server. Also, what we saw here, what we saw here, the DNS is a direct link in between the client and the server. But in reality, if you open Facebook from your mobile, the Facebook is not connected to your mobile. The, server, the Facebook is. Uh, available very far from your mobile and in between there is the internet and what's there on the internet so many so many hosts and let's say open relays and let's say hops that your request has to pass through from those hops the first one has to help to recognize what is the IP address of the Domain requests, you want to open the, uh, the Facebook, the first top here in this example, he has to recognize what is of the, the IP address of the Facebook you requested or whatever the domain you requested. What is the IP address? What is the address or the IP address of that domain? Thus an attacker, thus an attacker, he will try to make this host recognize differently for example for example the facebook or let's say facebook yeah, or let's say the google.com or uh, favorbay.com have ip address 1234 this ip address 1234 is a legitimate this attacker will make a dns poisoning in this server so anyone and a user requests that domain, which is the Facebook or the, the Google or the Fava Bay or any, which is already, let's say, poisoned by this attacker. The, ho the let's say, the, ho the host or the hop here is uh, the, um, the uh, server responsible for making the match in between the domain and the IP will redirect your request or the user's request to the falsified destination which is here in this example what the attacker has specified for example this is the domain request by this user the good.net this <coughs> attacker has made the matching of this good.net to this IP address if you ask for good.net you'll be directed to this IP address which is the IP address of this ever, which is the IP address of this ever, it's a, it's completely falsified. This is an example of a DNS match. Uh, let's say erroneous matching. It's a it's a poison. It's clear poison. Okay, DNS actually, uh, some of the uh, other usabilities of the uh, DNS is to recognize what are the connected, whom, what are the connected devices in a given domain, what are the connected devices in a connected uh, domain. So, can be utilized this uh, DNS transfer, it's a context of, it's a methodology via which an attacker might recognize what are the connected machines or devices to a specific domain. means DNS transfers will help the doers here we talk about attackers recognize the list of the connected machines to the domain he is in <coughs> it's not legal and thus this is one of the behaviors this is one of the uh, activities that the DNS can do DNS transfers yet new versions they do not 
<coughs> they do not allow such a behavior. They are blocking. They can do <coughs> the new version of the DNS, domain name, system or server. They can do, but they are blocking such a transfer. They do not allow unless there is a certain adjustment and sentence to be uh, adjusted to allow this behavior. Otherwise, it is blocked, the DNS transfer. What is it? It is a context of recognizing the list of the devices available in a given domain. And, and the main purpose behind is not, it's not to enlist the list of the devices. Yet, <coughs> the settings already utilized by an old DNS server or uh, an existing already uh, DNS server, the settings and the, uh, let's say, the configurations, they might be actually copied from that device to a new one. This is the role of this transfer. So it can help in making copies of the settings already utilized. Uh, spy, uh, let's say actually we know uh, since the the uh, the uh, the uh, classification of the malware chapter number two the adware we classify them into two groups the spyware and the key loggers so countermeasures countermeasures against uh, all the DNS issues the DNS transfers the, the DNS poisoning the DNS cache poisoning actually we can utilize we can utilize one of the techniques that we can utilize it's a uh, dns sec actually we can dns sec it's one of the protocols that you can utilize to <coughs> control the behavior of the dns the dns sec is one of the controls utilities that you can use administrators can refer to in order to control all the dns issues Another protocol can be utilized actually to uh, do a network attack, which is the ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol. We saw that the DNS is a match in between the WW, the domain, and the IP address. The ARP is a protocol that do the matching in between, in between the domain, the IP address, and the MAC address. Every device every digital device has a MAC address. This is, this is for sure. Every mobile, every laptop, every computer, every server have a MAC address, medium access control address. It's, it's stamped from the manufacturer. So this is an example. Okay, an IP address, it's a number. That can, be, can maybe, can actually manually can be written, can be set manually, can be changed at any time. MAC address never to change. The MAC address never to change. The MAC address of this device never to be available in another device. Never. It is for this device only, usually. Usually. But the IP address now we can find it in different places. We can use it and we can change it anytime. To match an IP address that points to a specific MAC address is the role of the ARP protocol. Very simple. So if a user asks for a given IP address, the respective device, he has to recognize what is the MAC pointed by that IP address, and they will deliver the content of the, that MAC address to the end user. This is due to the ARP protocol. Okay. <clears throat> As per definition of the market, as we said already, it's a physical address for every and each single digital device. The, here we do not have ARP poisoning, but we have ARP cache poisoning. ARP cache poisoning. In this regard here, we are going to do the same process. An attacker will control the cache of a provider. If a user legitimately, actually in a legitimate way, he asks for an IP address, the server will try to match in between the IP address and the MAC, and he will reply using the IRP. An attacker he will control the cache of the server. If the, he detects the request, he will reply in a very fast way with a falsified matching in between the IP address 
and the MAC address that he is willing to, uh, to, to send to the user. This MAC address is different than this MAC address. The first reply that this user, can, um, this computer receives, he will admit and he will reject the others. Easy. The same scenario like the DNS cache poisoning. <clears throat> uh, all the others, actually, all the rest here is a matter of uh, reading. We defined all of those issues. We defined, we, uh, we passed and they defined all of those uh, terminologies. Uh, TCP IP actually is another package of protocols utilized by the web. TCP IP is one of the packages utilized by the web solutions, transmission control protocol, internet protocol. It is controlling the identification over the www environment. Uh, there is an attack and there is an issue behind of it, which is to falsify the IP addresses, to falsify the uh, service providers and so on. So the, the, main, the main role of this TCP IP is to transfer and to control the paths via which data is being uh, is traveling in, in a network. So the paths might be, might be falsified and the number of packets might be actually uh, the sequence and the, uh, let's say the numbering of the packets transfer, transferred, yes, might be changed. So this is a hijacking, TCP IP hijacking. So instead of going and the shortest path now is we go through the longest path to delay, to cause a delay. Or instead of sending one, two, three, no, the sending will be one, three, two, it will be swapped. So this is a sort of a TCP IP hijacking. Uh, the sequence, exactly what I'm, I, I was explaining, exactly TCP IP hijacking. You can refer to that in the book. Road access point, actually one of the methodologies that the network attackers succeed is by using a rogue access point, a rogue access point. Here in the University of Nizwa, actually, can anybody use the uh, University of Nizwa Wi-Fi without being authenticated? No, you have to be authenticated, I'll show you a graph. So here, let's say the example of this, the University of Nizwa Wi-Fi uh, in network. If there is a non-controlled wireless access point, that access point is a rogue access point. Why? Because it is given access without control. Rogue access point. So <clears throat> I'll stop at this level. I'll stop at this level. Uh, see you next to class. Inshallah. If you your name, just say yes, please. If you your name, just say yes.